Welcome back to Android Q&A, my name's Jace, and today we cover things like what are your best mid-range tablets to how big can a phablet get before it's too big and you just look like a douchebag. Hello? Yeah, but it's not just the place where you come to get your Android questions answered, it's the place where we help you help other less tech-savvy people amongst us. The tech challenge, shall we say. I have a little bit of experience with this. Mother, this Nigerian prince who emailed you does not love you, he's not real, do not send him money. First up, Sam asks, what is the best mid-range tablet? Well, right at the top of that list, Sam, has got to be the Nexus 7. No, it does not have a stellar camera or a micro SD slot, but for the price point, it is fantastic. You get stock Android, you get updates almost as soon as Google has them up. And from a day-to-day -day performance perspective, it's not that far behind more expensive tablets. Next up is the Kindle Fire HDX. And although many other Kindle Fires were considered underpowered, and they really do use a forked version of Android, this tablet has power to spare. If your primary use for this tablet is media consumption, or you're considering buying this as a gift for a less tech-savvy user, then this device deserves serious consideration. In addition, the Mayday support has been receiving very positive reviews thus far. And finally, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And although it does have poor battery life, as has been tested here on Android Authority by Josh, it has been, by some, been referred to as the Swiss Army knife of Android tablets, because it does so many things reasonably well. And if you are a fan of the TouchWiz add-ons and the S Pen provided by Samsung, this may be the tablet for you. All right, second question came from Be Godly, and Be Godly was experiencing a little bit of buyer's remorse after leaving his iPhone for a new Android phone, and it was a little bit of a steep learning curve. Hey, 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 hey. No need for that. He is not iSheep. You are Neo. You have taken the red pill and gone down the rabbit hole to the wonderland of Android. But you do need some help. So I provided some links below. Your name is now Neo, be godly, Neo. There is some links in the show, links, uh, the show notes below for you. Uh, the first one is a video series, Android for Beginners. It's going to just walk you through a uh, basic Android operating system. And the second one is uh, a video series on an app called Tasker. And Tasker is an extremely popular app among Android users. You mentioned some task problems within your comments. Good luck, Neo. The third question that came in was, when will my Note 2 get KitKat? Well, you should know the Note 2 just got Jelly Boon back in April. And that means that the S4 and the Note 3 have to get KitKat before you. You're like two stages behind. Realistically, spring, if we're, you know, that's an optimistic view, maybe even the summer, it really depends. I mean, I it was announced that my Galaxy Note was gonna get uh, Jelly Bean last December, and it took till May to get it. So you never really know. And the final question that came in was with regards to phablets. How big can a phablet get before it's just too big? Good question. I have some personal experience with this. I think the question is not just how big is too big, but what other devices do I use on a regular basis? So for example, when I left the iPhone a couple years ago and came to Android, I got this. And I got this, it was the Note, it was the biggest you know, Android phone you could get at the time because it was my primary device. I mean, this is the only thing I had. I didn't have a tablet. And so this was acting as a tablet and a phone. I was reading on it for long periods of time, gaming, that's a great size for two thumb gaming, um, you know, watching movies for an extended period of time. And as a phone, it was everything. But then I got this. And this became my primary media device. I did everything, I still do everything on this. I read, watch movies, you name it, I go everywhere with it. And this is regulated to just two things, phone calls and navigation when I'm driving, GPS, because this doesn't have GPS. If this had GPS, I might use this. Um, so I would be better served to get something smaller and nimble. Now I have above average hands, right? I can use this with one hand, but it's it's a stretch. I have to strain a little bit and my, my hands are you know, a little above average for uh, you know, a man of my size. I'm almost six foot. So I think the question is not how big is too big, but how many devices have you had? If, if I only had this, yes, stick with this. It's fantastic, I loved it. But if you do have tablets, and I suspect many of you do, get the small phone and nimble and, and use it as a phone. And this is your media device. Thanks. So guys, one last thing before we go. I read all the comments, thank you very much. But one of the most common questions is something like, when does my version of my phone get KitKat? And I think we might do well to go deep into the idea of why 
Android is as fragmented as it is, why manufacturers can't update all at the same time like Google does, how, how and why does that happen. If you'd like to go into detail of that, let me know in the comments below. That might be an interesting video to do. I shall see you next week on the next Q&A. Is this thing on?